Okay, hello to everybody. I, I, I have the pleasure just to, to be a speaker in this master series. Uh, and uh, I would like to thank uh, Eric Santa Maria for uh, the, the, the webinar and all his team for the organization. And I'm going to talk about abdominal flaps uh, in breast reconstruction. And it will be just an overview and uh, I will just focus in, on technical details. Breast reconstruction is uh, just affected by many factors, some of them that we cannot control, like cultural, uh, mass media, social values, resources, the patient's expectations and wishes, the body shape, the health status, the status of the patient. But also there are some like our experience and surgeon names that are the ones that we have to control. And we have to take into account that breast reconstruction is an optional procedure. So all these decisions have to uh, be undertaken uh, in consensus with the patient. We could ask to the patients uh, which would be, would be their wishes in breast uh, reconstruction. Probably uh, they would uh, ideally uh, wish uh, to recover her real breast. That means a natural breast with no scars or and no donor sign mobility and everything achieved in a single procedure. But we have to admit that this is a closer to regenerative surgery than to reconstructive surgery that is nowadays what we can uh, offer. Fortunately, with uh, the advent uh, in, in plastic surgery and especially with perforator flaps, we, we are able just to offer a, a very natural breast reconstruction with minimal morbidity uh, for the patient. Uh, with perforator flaps, we can uh, just reconstruct a natural long-term uh, breast with a, a really low morbidity for the patient. There are many donor sites and many perforator flaps described for breast uh, reconstructions. But nevertheless, although the uh, DF flap was one of the first uh, perpetual flaps for breast reconstruction, uh, it's still the gold standard in breast reconstruction. And this is uh, uh, mainly because uh, women uh, with ages and with uh, the maternity, they have extra tissue in that area and the quality of the tissue is the one that mimics better the, the breast that has to be reconstructed. Since uh, the flap was uh, described, as I said, it's the, the best option and it would mimic mess more the, the breast. And here you can see just the example where there is a mastectomy specimen and on the other side, the DF flap breast reconstruction. We know that with age, uh, with the, when uh, women get older, the breast just lose the gland and has more fat. And this is what we really transfer uh, to reconstruct the breast with the DF flap. Here you can see now how we can, we can uh, get a, a very totic and natural breast. And nowadays we can say that DF flap is the standard, reliable and very safe procedure. And uh, this is mainly uh, because we have a, a lot of advancement in all aspects of the, this procedure. Just uh, to, compare where, uh, to compare with, we can see in 2000 our designs and in 2020, 20 years later, what are our designs. As you can see, we have uh, much more knowledge about the anatomy. We also we, we take into account many aesthetic concepts that probably we, we, we didn't pay attention at that time. So at that time when we got into trouble, uh, sometimes we, f we just lose the flap. And nowadays we have all the tools, all the anatomy knowledge just uh, to, to save our flap in case we get into trouble. So uh, what the evolution uh, has made this uh, the DF flap a very standard procedure and very safe because we have improved in the anatomical and physiological knowledge. Uh, we have all the diagnostic imaging tools that help us in the preoperative, intraoperative, and also postoperative uh, follow up. And also all the uh, microsurgical techniques, the skills, and, and, and also instruments ha have had a, good, a very uh, good evolution that permit us to be uh, and to, to handle a very safe uh, surgery.
About the anatomy in a perforator, in, in the F lab, we know that there is a deep system from which the perforators arise and, and, and go through the muscle until reach the subcutaneous tissue. But also we have a superficial system. We know that sometimes both systems can be connected. Sometimes the superficial one is the dominant one. Sometimes the, 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 the deep one is the one that perfuses better the abdominal wall. And we know that there is a high anatomical variability in every single uh, person. And because of that, uh, diagnostic imaging techniques has been very useful just to do a, a preventive planning and just sometimes just to perform a virtual surgery uh, uh, before going uh, into the real one. Nowadays, the, the preventive planning, it's um, universally performed with CT angio. Also, the Doppler of the sound is used just to confirm the findings of the CT angio. And also, infrared thermography is being used nowadays in some cases to locate uh, the, the perforator. Interoperatively, with the ICG angiography, we have the advantage just to, to know what is the, the, the behavior of the vascularization in, 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 in intraflap. So we just can tailor our flap just uh, based on the part of the flap that is uh, better perfused. And with that, we just manage just to reduce a lot our risk of uh, fat necrosis. And also uh, in, in, in our experience, we use um, for postoperative follow-up, the near infrared spectroscopy, as you will see later, it gives a very nice uh, control of our flap postoperatively. CT angio was described by our group, and uh, it's really, it gives a very reliable uh, of uh, the information. It, it gives good assessment of the quality course and also location of the perforators. And uh, it's uh, easy to interpret, interpret it, and uh, it can be immediately revised uh, in, in the operating room. It gives information of the of the uh, deep vessels and also the superficial ones and just immediate uh, uh, at the moment of the surgery we can transfer to the subcutaneous tissue here we can see how a, a beautiful perforator is just coming from the deep system it's a, a piercing the muscle and just reaching and branching in inside the subcutaneous tissue also here we can see a very nice and, and reliable superficial system, the artery and the vein just going axially through the subcutaneous tissue. Also nowadays we are working with the infrared thermography and it's based on the concept that the, the, perforate, the flow in the perforator vessels emits a, a, a signal that can be detected with a infrared uh, a camera and that permits also locate uh, the perforator vessel. Interoperatively, uh, as already I pointed out, we use the ICG and geography that it gives real information of the most well-nourished part of our flap. And we know that the areas of the flap, they are not fluorescent, means that they don't receive um, a good vascularization and we have to discard because otherwise the risk of fat necrosis is very high. And uh, also uh, in uh, the postoperative follow-up, uh, we use uh, the neon for it, a spectroscopy that is really very useful for the residents because they can sleep longer. And uh, in, in the, with uh, this, uh, the nearest, we can just um, assess the oxygen saturation of our flap. And if we compare with the oxygen saturation of uh, the rest of the body, we can detect early changes in our flap that, uh, that, that they are earlier than the clinical signals in case of uh, and to, uh, to be very successful in the revision. About the, the DF lab breast reconstruction, we have uh, just to know that it's, uh, uh, there are four procedures of reconstruction in one surgery. That means there is the flap dissection procedure, there is the recipient vessel dissection, the donor side closure and the flap shaping. And all of them are very important. If, if there is a, a failure in one of these four procedures, uh, there is going to be, uh, it's not going to be uh, a 
with satisfactory uh, breast reconstruction. For the flat design, we have to keep in mind that they, we have to design as exactly we were going to perform uh, an uh, aesthetic abdominoplasty. Because of that, what uh, we do is we try to, to locate the inframary incision as low as possible. As you can see in this image, uh, you can see that there are those uh, spots, means the normal, the natural fault of the abdominal uh, uh, abdomen of the patient. And then we just uh, low that, that uh, inferior line one to two centimeters in order to have to 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 have that line at six seven uh, centimeters of the of the vulva uh, because our aim is just to locate the uh, abdominal incision as low as possible uh, about the the flat day section um, we always uh, start uh, with the adrenaline skin skin infiltration just to reduce uh, the blood loss and to make the dissection more comfortable and uh, we always in a standard way we start with the dissection of the uh, inferior superficial epigastric vein because this is going to be our our um, our uh, uh, possibility of salvage our flap in case that the, uh, there is congestion of our flap. So just in the lower part of the uh, incision, we locate uh, at the level more or less of the scarpa fascia, the, the superficial vein, and we dissect to four or five centimeters. That uh, length is enough, and in case that you miss some length during uh, the, the salvage of the flap, you can dissect a intraflap to get uh, more length. Then we start from the lateral part of the flap in a superficial dissection until we find uh, our perforator that we previously marked with the CT angio and confirm with the echo Doppler. Here we can see. And uh, here in, in cases like that, you can see very nice gap. And what we do is we open uh, that, uh, that gap, we open the fascia and uh, we just very gently uh, we leave the part of the fascia attached in the posterior part of the perforator until we have dissected the whole pedicle in order to avoid traction to that uh, vessel. And uh, what we do first is to de-roof that perforator. What does it mean? That means just to separate uh, the, all the tissues from the anterior part of that vessel. And uh, if you just dissect uh, the muscle through the perimysium, you will see that all the nerve, all the small vessels are just shining from the, from the uh, main vessel. And just very gently, you have to just go on clipping from more superficial to the, 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 to the deep structures. Here you can see the same uh, picture. Once all the, the vessel is completely perforated with the motor nerves uh, preservation. Uh, during the section, uh, just some tricks very important is avoid the vessel traction, it's, that is very important. Avoid the desiccation and for that, just keep on uh, uh, um, flashing with uh, warm saline. Always harmless the section, be very kind, very gentle with all the structures. Don't destroy the muscle, don't destroy the motor nerves, don't uh, traction any, uh, none of the, of the anatomical structures. And for that, sometimes you need wide exposure. And don't try to, to, to perform all the dissection through a, a, a tiny uh, uh, exposure or a, a tiny channel. Here you can see if the dissection is nicely done, you will see uh, or during all the dissection that the, the perforator is fitting very nicely and all the field is completely bloodless. That is very important. If the, the field is, uh, there is blood in, in between, in, inside the field, it's very difficult just uh, to differentiate the different structures. And uh, just uh, once you have dissected uh, all the, the cutaneous flap, just you end up and go and uh, dissect the, the, the epigastric vessels. The length and then the, the, of the pedicle will be determined by the caliber uh, of the vessels. And that also, for that also is important to know what is going to be the caliber of the recipient vessels so they can match. 
Also, once we have all the flap isolated, we use always ICG and geography. With ICG and geography, we can see how the flap is uh, uh, fluorescent, what, what, what is the amount of flap. As you can see here, almost the whole flap is uh, completely uh, fluorescent. That, that means that it's with just one vessel completely well perfused. Uh, in contrast, in, in this case, you can see that there is uh, the four, uh, you will see later that uh, for zone, uh, there is a lack of vascularization, so there is a completely black spot in that area. That means that we have to discard that uh, tissue when we will just uh, shake the flap, otherwise we are going to have a fat necrosis and complications. Also with ICG, we can just uh, check our pedicle, the breathing, how it's nicely just nourishing uh, our flap. Just uh, how many perforators we include in, in our DF flap? As a general rule, we include one perforator, but we, we include the dominant one because we have performed a very good preparative planning with the CT angio and we know which is the best one for that tissue. Uh, but it's true that there are some cases uh, where we can include more than one perforator or two pedicles when we uh, decide that. We uh, do that in cases that we raise very big flaps, more than four or five hundred uh, grams and also if they have a small perforators and also uh, if we are planning to to use the whole abdomen and and, and uh, most of the cases to be sure that all the whole abdomen is going to be well vascularized we raise a double pedicle here we can see the flap with two perforators that they ideally if they are in the same row you don't have to cut muscle and uh, that uh, that uh, it's the minimal mobility is like if we have only raised one perforator for our flap also in this uh, case without destroying muscle there were three perforators in the same row and so we had a very healthy and well vascularized flap uh, also, as I said, in case that uh, we need the, the, the whole abdomen, we can just plan uh, and dissect the, the, both uh, deep inferior epigastric vessels and perform interflap anastomosis, like in this case and also in this case. Also, if you dissect the superficial vessels, you can uh, use the superficial vessels and anastomosis to the thoracodorsal ones and the deep ones to the mammary vessels. About the recipient vessels, we always or as a general rule, our first uh, choice is the internal mammary vessels. And we uh, dissect those vessels through the intercostal space. We don't uh, take off the rib cartilage. Uh, in most of the cases, we have enough space to perform the anastomosis. It's true that the anastomosis it needs some more skills because uh, there is less space. But uh, just in very few cases, we, uh, they, we resect the cartilage. About the donor site closure, it's very important. It's, uh, it's, as I said, it's one of the procedures that we have to also to look after very well because uh, the aim of the patient, when we explain in the outpatient clinic, we explain to them that they are going to undergo a safe dual procedure. That means the breast reconstruction, that, they, it, that is going to be with no increased risk and that they are going to obtain the added aesthetic benefit at the donor site. Because of that, we have to select very well the patients and not to force the indications. If the patient is very skinny and she has no abdominal tissue, we have to uh, uh, go for another flap. So in all of our play patients, uh, we, we, we perform abdominal applicature and also we use the tissue sealant to avoid the seromas. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the, the, our rate of serum is really very, very low. And, um, and also they, after that, they use uh, some garment for, from, for compression. Uh, flap shaping is the, the, the final uh, procedure of, all of the whole breast reconstruction surgery, but it's really, really very important because it's what's going to give also sense to all the procedure. As you can see all these images, this is not breast reconstruction. Unfortunately, this is just a mass or a breast reconstruction at all. Breast reconstruction means uh, to, to have symmetry, to have the nipple area complex in the right situation. If we perform the flap, to have a nice contour in the abdominal area. So the, the woman can, can, can feel self-confidence with clothes and with no clothes. And that is very important. 
so here you can have some examples of uh, uh, just uh, mastectomy and the light breast reconstruction and after uh, just the final uh, breast reconstruction. In cases like that, the important point is just to decide the exact point uh, where you are going to, to locate the submammary fault and that it has to be a symmetrical one. Uh, you have to design uh, depending on the anatomical location of the submammary fault, but also a slightly higher one, one uh, to two centimeters, depending of the uh, of the radiation of the thorax, especially if they have been radiated, because when you pull down the abdominoplasty flap, that uh, uh, summary fall is going to 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 just go down. So that there are some uh, tricks that you have to take into account. Here you can see another example uh, is immediate breast reconstruction uh, with the uh, design and the final result. We always in our department uh, perform the contralateral symmetrization at the same time. It's true that the, that needs uh, some learning curve, but uh, we uh, almost never have to revise the mastopexy and we believe that it's a benefit for the patient. And another example also with immediate breast reconstruction with, uh, with, uh, without the need of the contralateral breast uh, mastopexy because the patient uh, wanted a totic breast. And you can see how natural uh, the final result. The SIA flap. The SIA flap, uh, it's uh, conceptually, it's, uh, the result is the same that, uh, of the egg flap. It's also a four reconstructive procedures in one surgery, but there are some uh, difference between uh, both flap. There is the flap dissection is slightly different because the pedicle of this flap, it's an axial pedicle that uh, it origins from the femoral vessels. It does not pierce the muscle and it's not uh, under the rectus muscle. Uh, about the receiving vessel, they are the same that in the deep flap, in the mammary vessels at the first, as a first choice. The donor site closure is exactly the same of an abdominoplasty. So the, the morbidity of the, this flap is the minimal that can exist because we not even open uh, the, the, the muscular fascia and we don't have to dissect the rectus muscle. So the risk of bulging or area is very low. And about the flap shaping, there's also some differences because the, the pedicle is normally shorter and uh, that limits slightly the, the shaping of the flap. Also, we uh, plan the flap with a CT angio. Here we can see just the vessels rising from the femoral vessels. Here in this uh, sagittal view, we can see how the artery and, and the vein are rising from those femoral vessels. And, but uh, there are some anatomical uh, particularities of this uh, SIA flap, that is the origin of the pedicle is very variable. It can uh, arise from the common femoral with the CA, with the DF flap, directly from the deep femoral artery. And also we have to take into account that just uh, one third of the women have a reliable superficial epigastric system. Most of them, the abdominal tissue is, uh, uh, is vascularized in a dominant way by the uh, deep inferior epigastric vessels. So once you have find in that the patient has a reliable vessels, you can uh, go for it. But also we have to take into account that the artery has a, a smaller caliber than in the deep vessels, uh, and, and that the length is also a smaller. That is something that you have to take into account in the anastomosis time and also at the time of the shaping. But as you can see, the morbidity is minimal. Here you can see that the pedicle is axial, it's just uh, um, uh, entering the flap through one of the, the borders in the subcutaneous area and in an axial way is nourishing all the flap. And here it is, it's the minimal uh, possible morbidity for the patient, just a clip uh, where there was a, a perforator. How we decide if the patient uh, is going to undergo a SIA or a DF flap? We do the ICG and also with a CT angio, we can just uh, assess. With the ICG, what we do is we just uh, locate the dominant perforator, we dissect the superficial vessels, and then we uh, we insert a, a clamp in the dominant uh, perforator, and then we see how with the superficial vessels is well nourished, 
and then we do opposite and uh, just uh, we decide. Just two examples. One patient, as you can see, with a huge abdomen, and when we ask it for a CT angio, there were no reliable best perforators from the deep system. But in contrast, as you can see, she had huge superficial epigastric vessels, so we, uh, we decided uh, to perform an SIA flap, as you can see here, very nice vessels, and we just, we can, we could just uh, reconstruct a very huge breast, it's just a, uh, uh, that's realized with uh, superficial epigastric vessels. Another case of immediate breast reconstruction with a flap also uh, raised, and uh, the result, as you can see, aesthetically, the result is exactly the same than uh, in a DF flap. So, with uh, abdominal flaps, uh, it's uh, until now the, the, the technique that offers uh, the, the, um, the best result and that mimics best uh, the breast that we have to, to resect because uh, with the uh, abdominal flaps we can achieve symmetry, shapes, totic and natural breast and, and soft. Uh, to conclude, uh, with the uh, autologous breast reconstruction with abdominal flaps, uh, what is very important is the preparative planning. That means just to offer the patient the right indication, not uh, to give the patient our aims uh, against uh, her, her uh, expectations. Diagnostic imaging also is key nowadays. We have to take advantage of all the technology because uh, it's uh, what really uh, will help us. The dissection is very important to design uh, the plan very carefully. That means that if we suspect that we are going to have uh, 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 to dissect a very big flap, we have to then dissect our pedicle. Or if while, if while we are dissecting our pedicle, we are just seeing that the flap is slightly congested, then we have to know that we are probably have to anastomose an extra uh, superficial vein. Dissection has to be very kind, very gentle. We have to avoid traction, always control the, the residents that they, they don't pull, uh, and also avoid also desiccation to avoid uh, vasospasm. And always keep in mind that the breast reconstruction is at the end an aesthetic procedure and that we have to offer our patient aesthetic abdominoplasty and also uh, the shaping of the breast has to be uh, at the top of our uh, aims. And just to conclude, don't forget that the breast reconstruction is a, a procedure that has to be uh, performing consensus with the patient, and that is the only way to uh, achieve uh, quality of life after breast cancer for all those patients. Thank you for all your attention, and uh, if we are lucky, we are going just to organize the next BBM in October, and uh, you can just say, uh, come and join us and to learn about abdominal flaps and the rest of techniques for breast reconstruction. Thank you very much.